Good Shepherd, say our names and lead us. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Most of us have seen images of a shepherd carrying a sheep on his shoulders. We've seen it in Bibles, we've seen it in today's bulletin. And yet, many of us probably don't know any real shepherds. We probably haven't seen many people carrying sheep around on their shoulders. Many of us have probably heard sermons about shepherds many times. So today, I would like to focus on a slightly different aspect. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. What is it like to be called by name? What have those experiences been like for you? As I thought about this, one of the first examples that came to my mind was my mother saying, Alden Myron, get in here immediately. <laughs> I imagine many of us have had similar experiences. <laughs> Being called by name sometimes means we're in trouble. And I wonder if sometimes Jesus calls us by name that way as well. Alden, what are you doing? Right? And I think about in Genesis, the Lord called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. You know, I can almost hear the Lord saying, Adam Joseph, or whatever Adam's middle name might have been. Yeah, sometimes being called by name isn't always the most pleasant. It is recognizing that we have strayed. And yet, in the psalm for today, we are reminded your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We do at times go astray, and at times the Lord's rod and staff help us get back on course, and that can be a great comfort. There are other times that we are called by names, and not always kindly. Sometimes we are called names that are not really our true name. We are called those sort of names by rules, and this sticks with us throughout our life. My father was very conservative, and I had a crew cut for much of my childhood. And because of that, there was a nickname assigned to me that still haunts me. And I will be vulnerable, and I will share it with you, but please do not use it to taunt me. <laughs> I was called Aldi the Baldy. <laughs> and we need to recognize those names, acknowledge them, get healing from the times that we have been called names unkindly. But more importantly, we need to focus on when we have been called names very kindly, because I think this is most importantly how the Lord calls us. We are called names that are intimate. I posted on Facebook asking people their memories, their feelings, their experiences of being called names, and they often spoke about personal names that their friends or family called them, that were very intimate, kind. And I think that's an important part 
with how Jesus calls us. We are seen. And we are remembered. One of the names that came to my mind as I was working on this was Sandra Bland. Do people remember Sandra's name? In 2015, she died in police custody. An African-American woman. And it brought forth the movement to say her name to say the names of people who have died in police custody. Similar to how we say the names of people who served our country, or names of those who died in 9-11. Saying names is an important remembrance. And we say names of people we love as part of our service. So, Say her name. Say the names of our beloved people. Say names the way God says our names. Sometimes God gives us new names. Names of who we have become or who we are becoming. Abraham, Israel, Peter. What is the name that God is longing to call you? What are you being called into? Maybe, maybe one of your names is Beloved Chorister. Maybe one of your names is Deeply Valued Echo. Maybe one of your names is Compassionate Pantry Helper. These, I believe, are some of the names that God longs to call us. When I think of the names that God wants to call us, I remember an old hymn, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. Come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. And so I pray that we all can come here at Grace, feel that we are coming home, that we are coming home when we are weary. And this leads me to my next question. What might God be longing to call us as a community? What might God be longing to call grace to? Our lessons today provide some helpful hints. In the Acts of the Apostles, we read, those who have been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. So let us devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching. Let us devote ourselves to fellowship. Please come to coffee hour. Hang out with everyone. Chat, talk, get to know each other a little bit better. To the breaking of bread, come to the altar, to the prayers. And what does God promise to us in this? One of the things that we pray is for an increase in our members. And in the Acts of the Apostles, it says, and day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So let us pray for that. And not just that our numbers might increase, but as it says in the Gospel, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So I pray for all of us that we be a growing community of truly abundant life. And as we grow into that community, as we relish being called our true name by our shepherd, may we grow to 
be more like our shepherd and call one another by our true name to be truly seen and filled.